Friday. What am I looking at? Not sure. I'm working on this. Hey, you might want to put that time stone in your back pocket, Doc. You might want to use it. In this scene from the Avengers Infinity War, two members of the group of villains known as the Children of Thanos come to New York City to capture the Time Stone. At this point, Thanos has two of the six Infinity Stones, and he's looking to complete his collection of stones to gain unlimited power. However, the masters of the mystic arts, Doctor Strange and Wong, and the Avengers themselves, Tony Stark and Doctor Banner, are set on keeping the stone in safe hands. If you're new here, you will first watch the clip with subtitles in English, then we will teach you all of the most important vocabulary, pronunciation, and cultural context before moving on to the next clip. Finally, you will test everything you learned by watching all the clips without subtitles and answering some quiz questions. Are you ready? Hear me and rejoice. You are about to die at the hands of the children of Thanos. Be thankful that your meaningless lives are now contributing I'm to sorry, the balance. I'm sorry, Earth is closed today. You better pack it up and get out of here. Stonekeeper, does this chattering animal speak for you? Certainly not, I speak for myself. I've been trespassing in this city and on this planet. It means get lost, Squidward. He exhausts me. Bring me the stone. Ben, you want a piece? No, not really, but when do I ever get what I want? That's right. It's been a while. Good to have you, buddy. I need to concentrate here for a second. Come on, come on, Max. Where's your gun? I don't know. We've sort of been having a thing. There's no time for a thing. That's the thing right there. Let's go. Dude, you're embarrassing me in front of the wizard. I'm sorry. I, either I can't or he won't. It's right. like, I don't... Hey, stand down. Keep an eye on him. Thank you. I have a... Him. Nanotech, you like it? A little something. Like Dr. Banner, if the rest of your green friend won't be joining us. Ah! Ah! Gotta get that stone out of here now. It stays with me. Exactly. Bye. Hear me and rejoice. You are about to die at the hands of the children of Thanos. At the hands of is a phrase that we use to say someone is going to receive some kind of suffering or unpleasant treatment from someone else. Example, many people have died at the hands of the gang members. To rejoice means to feel or show great joy or delight. If you rejoice at something, you feel extremely happy. Example, he rejoiced at our victory. Tonight we rejoice. We rejoice! In the context of the Avengers, this villain is accustomed to using this phrase at the beginning of a speech, as we see earlier in this movie. Hear me and rejoice, for even in death, you have become children of Thanos. Hey, so are you enjoying the lesson so far? Well, every week we help learners like you understand fast speaking natives without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without subtitles. In fact, Maisa said that by watching our videos, she's more motivated to learn English. So if you want us to help you as well, you just have to hit that subscribe button and the bell down below so you don't miss any of our new lessons. Be thankful 
that your meaningless lives are now contributing I'm to sorry, the balance. I'm sorry, Earth is closed today. You better pack it up and get out of here. Literally, something that is meaningless has no meaning. Example, these symbols are apparently meaningless. However, we especially use this word to say that something doesn't have a clear purpose or importance. Why do you want to kill yourself? I've been working for 10 years now at this meaningless, dead-end job, and nobody here even knows that I exist. Chandler? <laughs> and of course, for the opposite meaning, we say meaningful. How do you think it's going to look when you get her something incredibly meaningful and expensive and her boyfriend Joey gives her an orange? <laughs> Tony then tells the villains to pack it up and get out of here. To pack or to pack up means to put things into cases or bags before going on a trip. But if you say something like, let's pack it up, you're saying let's leave. Said in the imperative, this is usually a way to tell someone in an insulting way that they should go away. Get out of here is also a common phrase we used to say leave, especially in an emphatic manner. All right, listen, I haven't done anything wrong and I need to get out of here. So I cannot be here with you. Does this chattering animal speak for you? Certainly not, I speak for myself. As a verb, to chatter means to talk quickly in a friendly way without stopping, especially about things that are not serious or important. Example, we were chattering about the events of last night. If animals chatter, they make short, high-pitched sounds. This is why he describes Tony in an insulting way as a chattering animal. On the other hand, if you say, for example, I speak for myself, you're making it clear you're expressing an opinion or feeling that's yours and not anyone else's. In the same way, when you speak for someone else, you're expressing the thoughts and opinions of another person. I'm in charge now. I speak for this family. I mean, I, I could if you wanted me to. Furthermore, we also often say that we speak for everybody, for all of us, etc., when we're confident that everybody agrees with what we're saying. Phoebe and Mike are perfect for each other, and I know I speak for everyone here when I wish them a lifetime of happiness. Isn't learning English so much easier when you have fun doing it? Well, if you enjoy our methodology for teaching English and you want to take your native fluency and comprehension to the next level, then I highly recommend our Fluent with Friends course. You will master American vocabulary, pronunciation, cultural context, and so much more. And you can get a free try of that right now with our three-part mini course. Just click up here or down in the description below to learn more and sign up. The trespassing in this city and on this planet. It means get lost, Squidward. To trespass means to go onto someone's private property without their permission. Where are you going? In the backyard. We'll take this picture really quickly and then we'll just get out of no, here. No, let's just, let's just wait for them to come home. Okay, that, that's trespassing. No, it's not. We used to live here. I don't think that does well. Get lost is a rude way to tell someone to go away or to stop annoying you. Example, she's no longer my friend. I told her to get lost. Then, Tony calls the villain Squidward. This is a character from the cartoon SpongeBob SquarePants, and he's making fun of him because they look similar. Lastly, notice how Doctor Strange uses two prepositions, in and on, when he says in this city and on this planet. If you find the use of the prepositions in, on, and at difficult, you might want to check out this lesson we made. Oh, Santa. Ben, you want a piece? To want a piece of someone means to want to fight them. Hey, Delgado. Manny, I'm talking to you. You want a piece of this? Ow! What was that for? Looks like I gave you a piece of this. What the hell? I was just offering you some apple crumble. Been a while. A while is an unspecified period of time. When we say it's been a while, we mean that a long time has passed since you last did something. We usually follow this up with since. It's been a while since I read an actual newspaper. Missed that sound. Where's your gun? 
don't know, we've sort of been having a thing. Banner here is saying that he's been having some problems with the Hulk. He's addressing this issue in a very vague and general way, so that's why he refers to it as a thing. Example, he and his wife have been having a thing, so she's going to stay at her sister's apartment for a while. Dude, you're embarrassing me in front of the wizard. I'm sorry, I, I, I can't or he won't. Or like, I don't... In legends and fairy tales, a wizard is a man who has magical powers. A famous wizard you've probably heard about is Harry Potter. Tony is referring to Doctor Strange and his friend. He is being humorous and making fun of their superpowers as they are not actually wizards. As Banner is trying to summon the Hulk, he says either I can't or he won't. Besides being the negative version of will to express a future action, won't is very commonly used to say that someone doesn't have the intention of doing something. This use doesn't actually involve a sense of the future tense. I'll pass. What happened? I made him a beautiful sandwich and he won't eat it. Yeah, because he had pickles on it. Don't then we use the words either and or together in a sentence or phrase to indicate two ideas or possibilities. Example, I either drink tea or coffee in the morning. I'll either get an iPhone 8 or one of those high-end Samsung phones. Like, I don't... Hey, stand down. Keep an eye on him. Thank you. I have one. If you tell someone to stand down, you're telling them to relax after they've gotten ready to do something. Come quietly or there will be trouble. You stole that from Robocop. That's Robocop. Just stand down. You're embarrassing me. Look, fire pit. To keep an eye on someone or something is an idiom that means to watch someone or something carefully, paying attention that nothing bad happens to that person or thing. I do have to ask you one favor. Sure. Sheldon's nervous about me leaving. Just keep an eye on him while I'm gone. Uh, I don't know. Remember what happened when I took care of your goldfish? Where'd that come from? In fast speech, did is often reduced or modified. In this case, the speaker only pronounces it as a D sound. We can see other instances of this reduction after question words like what, when, where, or how. Okay, Trevor, what'd you tell him? Where'd you get the car? And the suit. I stole them both. A uh, car from your wife, suit from your grandmother. <clears throat> Alex, when'd you get home? As you saw, we can even express this informally in writing with an apostrophe and D. Where'd, what'd, went. Be careful to not confuse this with would, which we also express with an apostrophe D. You can tell the difference by the context. What did you have for dinner? What did you like for dinner? When did you get home from the concert? If you went to the concert, when did you get home? It's nanotech, you like it? This is short for nanotechnology, which is the science of building machines at a subatomic level. All right, so now it is time to test everything that you learn by watching the full scene without subtitles. And we will be challenging you even more by stopping it periodically to ask you some different quiz questions. Be sure to let us know how you did by sharing your score down in the comments below. Hear me and rejoice. You are about to die at the hands of the children of Thanos. <laughs> Be thankful that your meaningless lives are now contributing I'm to sorry, the balance. I'm sorry, Earth is closed today. You better pack it up and get out of here. Stonekeeper, does this chattering animal speak for you? Does this chattering animal speak for you? Certainly not, I speak for myself. I've been trespassing in this city and on this planet. He means get lost, Squidward. He exhausts me. Minya. Bring me the stone. Benny, you want a piece? Mm, no, not really, but when do I ever get what I want? But when do I ever get what I want? When do I ever get what I want? That's right. It's been a while. It's gonna be good to have you, buddy. Okay. I need to concentrate there for a second. Come on, come on, Max. Where's your gun? I don't know. We've sort of been having a thing. It's no time for a thing. That's the thing right there. Let's go. Shot. 
dude, you're embarrassing me in front of the wizard. I'm sorry, I, I, I can't, or he won't. It's okay. like, I don't... Hey, stand down. Keep an eye on him. Thank you. I have him. nanotech you like it all right so now you can go and really test your learning by watching the full avengers infinity wars movie and hey endgame is coming out really soon too and we'll definitely be making a lesson with that so be sure that you subscribe so you don't miss that and if you want us to help you on your goal to take your english fluency to the next level we would love to do that check out a three-part mini course that i told you about by clicking the button below and now it's time to go be on the classroom and 